the Joe Rogan experience. And I was kind of, I grew up in a machine shop. My dad was a machinist, so I was doing that from like five years old. I was sweeping the fucking floor. And I was like, I was like, man, this is not what I'm meant to be. Like, I'm supposed to be something great. But, uh, but everybody around me is like, no, this is what you do. You live in this little town and you do, you follow the rules. You're going to be a machinist or a farmer or, you know, whatever. And, uh, you know, that shit pissed me off, you know. And I never really found my niche. And so I was homeschooled actually for, I think, two years in uh, junior high. So I think that was sort of actually the start because I went back to school. And when I went back to school, I was now the outsider. I didn't have any friends. Um, and then going up, uh, all of a sudden I'm in high school and I have no friends. I have no, uh, I, I can't get laid for shit. Uh, I think that's what causes anger in a lot of people in the world, right? Oh, yeah, and depression. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and, a big yeah, factor. Yeah, and, and at the exact same time, I'm starting to experiment with uh, drugs and alcohol. So you put the two together, you know, um, I was supposed to be um, the prodigal son, you know what I mean? Like, I was very intelligent. I was, um, you know, I, like, I was doing things by the time I was 15 years old in the machine shop that, that guys – you know, my, they've been working for my father for 10, 15 years, couldn't do, you know what I mean? So I was sort of this prodigal son. I was good at athletics and everything. Had no problem with all that stuff. So I think uh, it was just sort of a backlash, you know, and then I let that anger get the best of me. So now when you were doing drugs and alcohol, what were the drugs? Like what was the drug that caused you to overdose? Heroin, Ooh. an injection, yeah. Damn, that's deep. When you're yeah. injecting it, that's that's when you're all in, baby. Yeah, and you know, I didn't actually do it a whole lot. It's kind of the funny thing. A lot of people thought that I was addicted to heroin, and I wasn't. That I think that was probably the fifth time that I did it, maybe six, something like that. I didn't count, but um, you know, that was sort of my fuck. That was my step into the dark side. Mm. You know, and it, and a blessing and a curse man you know it immediately i was like oh okay <laughs> that's what can happen right it's right. the step back uh and you know i was very naive very uh man i was a fool really like because what i did i remember leaving the uh, uh the hospital i was like okay well i'm never doing heroin again but let's go do some coke <laughs> <You> <laughs> <know>? <laughs> <laughs> right, so I, I was just a dummy, man. Wow. And, How old and, were you? Um, I think I was 21, 22, uh, one of those. Uh, I mean, that was like 15 years ago. I, there's a lot of stuff. I, I I was actually kind of thinking about, like, uh, so again, you know, uh, on this podcast, I was like, uh, I was like you know, we're, this is probably going to come up on it. It's a pretty uh, intense story. Um, I was like, damn, I can't remember all the details of that shit. <laughs> it was like a long time ago. But anyway, yeah, so I was like 21, 22, and um, – it wasn't too much long later, you know, I lived with this girl and, it, you know, she was a drug addict too and she had a couple of kids and it was like, I was like, all right, well, now I got a place to live. Like, let's get fucked up, <laughs> hmm. you know, and, and it was, uh, I never did um, heroin again after that, obviously. Um, I think I did oxys though. Percocet stuff like that. Which, Oxy's basically the same thing, right? It's yeah, which which form. I mean, I didn't realize it at the at the time. But really, my drug of choice was meth back in that day. That was what I really liked. And that was actually what I was addicted to at one point, and I ended up going to jail, and that was what got me uh, out of addiction. I didn't realize I was addicted until I was in jail. So, what made you realize it when you were in jail? I just, uh, you know, just couldn't stop thinking about it and just wanted it and just, I mean, I didn't get, have like, like, um, like cold sweats or anything. I don't think that happens with uppers, but, um, I mean, I was just, you know, like, like, I couldn't stop thinking about it, man. I was like, dude, th like just a lot of that anger was coming out. I was just like, God, like, what the fuck? Like, I wanted to fight everybody. I was like, somebody give me something, you know? And wow. Yeah. It was just it was a really terrible experience, but. Probably only lasted three, four days, not even, maybe not even that. And then you came out of it. Yeah, I mean, I was just like able to accept my fate and and deal with it. What does it feel like to be on meth? Uh, you ever take Adderall? No. <laughs> I never taken an Adderall. No. Um, 
pretty uh, similar to Adderall, right? Yeah, it's like Adderall. I mean, that's the closest I would say. Um, I mean, you're high, um, but you don't have. I mean, it sends euphoria more than anything. Just a excuse me, just an extreme sense of euphoria. Just everything's beautiful, but then, man, as soon as you start to lose that a little bit, you just itch for it so bad, man, so bad. Like you just want it again. You 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 don't want to sleep. You like your teeth would be grinding. You're just like. Like, oh, you're, you're just tensing up all your muscles. Like, God, well, I got to get more of that, you know? <laughs> now, were you working out at all back then? No. Nothing. No. Well, I t well, not working out like I should be. So, again, I, I was angry. A lot of times, like, I'd be at a party. This was a, a common thing. I'd, I'd be at, like, a party or just doing drugs, whatever. And I just start getting, look at everybody, like, I fucking don't like none of you and i would just walk outside and, and i would go for a run i'd run five six miles come back and be like all right give me another line or whatever wow yeah um you would and, run and then come back to the yeah, party yeah and then sometimes i would i would fight people you know that was common uh, very very common if you call that working out <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and we like w this particular time in my life i was living in a, a little town called jamestown ohio and i, I had this buddy um, he was friend, his cousin, well, his cousin was a fighter and this was kind of my first, uh, uh, foray into mixed martial arts or first, uh, experience watching it and everything. And, uh, they would train in the grass in the backyard. You know, we, I remember watching uh, Ken Shamrock DVDs or VHSs back then, um, leg locks. We'd go on the living room floor, like just be shit face drunk and, I'm lucky I didn't tear him ACL or anything. We're like, oh, this is what he's doing. This is how you do it. Heel just, hooks. Yeah, heel hooks. And <laughs> I mean, I don't remember all the techniques, but I remember it was like, you know, pancreation stuff, right? right. And we'd just be laying there. And it, and it was always a, a thought of like, like, dude, this is fucking awesome, man. Like, I could beat Tank Abbott. Like, what are you, <laughs> <laughs> you know, and we would joke about it, man. We would say, I remember specifically sitting there and be like, like, dude, like, you know, we're going to get you a fight in, uh, you know, the local joe schmo show and then uh you know we're going to get you up and you're going to go to a pride and then you're going to go to the ufc and i was like oh cool the hell yeah let's do it and that was you know it was like a joke kind of but that, like that was what was in my head that's so that that's what we were going to do introduction to martial arts yeah so what was your first real formal training like what what gym did you first so i fought before i trained get the fuck out yeah. of here <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> so actually, this this guy that was uh, um, he was supposed to go fight Wes Sims, and uh, his name was Fat Joe, is what we called him. He was supposed to go fight Wes Sims, Fat Sims, Wes Sims that day, and I said, "Yeah, let's go, man. I want to go with you. I want to see this shit up close, right?" And so we go there, and uh, I'm I'm doing a bunch of coke on the way, and you know, to me, it's just gonna be a party. Like I'm just gonna watch my dude fight. I get there and. Uh, you know, there's a, he signs up on the table, and I was like, I was like, dude, what, is that how you, you know that's all you got to do? He's like, yeah. He's like, you just pay thirty bucks and you come fight. I said, man, maybe I should do that. And then the the guy, <laughs> and I'm I'm looking inside and I see the uh, you know people sitting around smoking cigars it's like you see on a movie. People smoking cigars. You see bets being made and stuff. And and uh, the guy goes, man, you want to fight the champion? Like nobody wants to fight him. And I was like, fuck yeah, man, I'll fight him. Are you kidding me? So I literally went across the street. There's a sporting goods store across the street or down the street or something. Went and bought a mouthpiece, come back. Uh, there's a restaurant across the street, boiled the mouthpiece at the restaurant, used their microwave, come back. And then, uh, and then we're at the fighters meeting. So the fighters meeting back then was a lot different. So there wasn't way in. It was like you and you, you guys look about the same size. Uh, you guys doing kickboxing? Okay, you guys fight, right? So that's how the way it worked out. And I'm sitting there and they're like, okay, you're the champion, you're fighting him. and I was like, oh, shit, all right, fuck this motherfucker, right? And, uh, <laughs> you know, so I'm sitting by station, this guy, he taught me how to do a jab. He's like, man, he's like, all you got to do to beat this guy, just jab him. He's like, you see this? Just throw this jab. I was like, oh, okay, I'm going to do that. And I uh, went out there, and I beat the guy. So he actually what? quit. Yeah, he actually quit, you know? So he was a tough man champion is what he was. And uh, I actually threw a jab, punched him in the face, and he went to shoot uh, on me. I did, you know, a, a playground guillotine choke, and he just quit. I don't think I actually had the choke in. I don't. I, 
highly doubt. You Did know, he tap? He tapped out saying that his calf cramped up. <laughs> I have no idea, you know, like <laughs> wow. what, what really happened. I mean, I, I certainly didn't know a guillotine choke. I didn't even know the name of it. So uh, anyway, later that night, I was like, dude, like your fight didn't go very long. You want to fight again? I said, yeah, whatever, man. And they said, well, this guy, you know, he's going pro in his next boxing match. You're a kickboxer. Let's fight him. I said, all right, I'll fuck him up, right? I'll go do it. <laughs> This dude beat the shit out of me. So that was actually the first. The nice thing about that was it actually made me realize how tough I am. That was the saving grace. I, I mean, he just, you know, just pieced me up. Just one punch after another. You know, I'm just eating punch after punch. And then, uh, yeah, that was it. I said, man, I got to do this shit. And then, so my second fight, uh, I, you know, I didn't think I still yet needed to train. Uh, my second fight... I uh, met a guy at a gym, so you know I did go to this gym. It was a Japanese jiu-jitsu gym, and he goes and, and he goes, "Hey man, you want to fight in like two weeks in Muay Thai?" Hell yeah, right? Um, so for two weeks, you know, I hit the bag probably for five minutes at a time, whatever or something. Um, I go to the fight, and uh, man, I, <laughs> this is the worst part. So. I get in there, the first thing the guy does, comes in, shoots on me, takes me down. We're in big gloves, uh, shin pads and all this, takes me down. I'll get up, look at the record, what the fuck? He's taking me down, we can't do this, Muay Thai, right? Uh, he's like, fight, you know, comes in, takes me down again. I was like, what the fuck, man? So I was like, okay, so we're fucking wrestling, right? So I come out and get in sort of a wrestling stance, drop my hands, fucking kicks me in my head. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so uh, we'll come find out later at San Shao. Not oh. Muay Thai, Scott Sheely show. What I used to, I, I used to work with him a lot. San Shao, for people who don't know, was uh, kickboxing with takedowns. Yep, uh, I cornered Kung Maurice Lee. Smith back in the day when Maurice was doing that once. Ah, okay. Yeah, in Burbank, I think it was. It was weird. It was confusing. It's like okay, I mean, it's interesting, I guess. Mm. I mean, it's probably a good skill set to learn, learn how to do takedowns and throws with. With kickboxing, but then you just let the guy up, which is just weird. You didn't get it, huh? He was weird. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it still goes on. They sand off. Sand yeah. I, I think it's an amazing sport. I love it. It's amazing. Yeah. And it's Kung a, Lee. A, a lot of times it's a lot like throws in Muay Thai because, you, you mm -hmm. know, there's a lot of trips and throws in Muay Thai. Except, that, except you get points for the, right. the throws. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, up to five. Yeah. Another variation. Yeah. Yeah, I so, think if like their feet go above their head, it's five points. So when did you get serious? So you did this. So it was right after events. that, because because I mean he beat the shit out of me. Um, I like I remember walking out of there and people were looking at me like, "Damn, how'd you survive that, bro?" I mean, and like people were actually asking me that, like, "Dude, how did you survive that shit?" I'm like I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I had to, and uh, I had to go to work that night. I was like working third shift. <laughs> I had oh, to go to wow. work right after. Everybody was looking at me at work. Like, dude, you got like two black eyes. Like, if anyway, um, that was when I, I uh, said to myself, you know, I want to try this, uh, and you know, I think, uh, you know, this is a, a something I really enjoy, and I want to go for it. Um, so I met this guy. Um, uh, his name was Eli Ayers, and he was fighting in King of the Cage, one of the toughest guys I've ever met, and then a guy Braden Workman and. Uh, they were training for, it was a big show there in Columbus. Um, God, I can't remember the name of the show, but I think like Lawler fought on it. Like a bunch of Militich guys, Tim Sylvia. You know the name if I say it, I can't remember. But anyway, um, yeah, and then, you know, then I really got that shit kicked out of me when I got in the gym. You know, then I realized like, you know, what a real beating was. And uh, yeah, it just went from there, man, because I, I, I just said I never looked back and I, th I thought, man, you know, I want to change my life. You know, I'm, I'm you know, I wasn't never actually a uh, the type of person that, that fit in with the drug user scene, right? Like that mm -hmm. wasn't me. It was just a, again an expression of anger and these things that um, you know in my childhood just kind of you know came out the wrong way, right? So it wasn't really uh, like I fit in there. Right. Um, so at this point, like I'm, I'm really not fitting in anywhere. And this was a, a, a quote that I remember where I said, stop trying to find yourself and start to define yourself. And, and I felt like the whole time I was trying to find myself and I said, you know, I'm a, I'm a define who the fuck I am. I'm going to say, this is what I am. And this is what I do. I'm a fighter. Fuck it. Let's go. It's do or die. Um, I've, I've been in jail. I've been dead. I've been, you know, uh, I've slept in, on, in the fucking snow. You know what I mean? Like I've, 
been homeless. Like I've done every low thing you can do. Like what's the worst that could happen? I get knocked out. There's nothing. So, uh, you know, I decided, uh, you know, this is my path and I'm going to carve the path. I'm not going to search for a path. I'm going to make the path and I'm not going to look back and I'm going to the top of that mountain. And, uh, and that's something I still talk about today when I talk to people is about, uh, I didn't have any idea how I was going to do it, but I knew why I was going to do it. And I knew that I was going to do it. And I think, um, in my own personal struggles, and I think in a lot of people's struggles, they kind of get caught up in the how, you know, how am I going to do this? How am I going to win this fight? Whatever. And I think when you know, understand your why, I, I think the how becomes a lot more, um, clear, clear. Yeah. More clear and easier. I mean, it doesn't matter anymore. You could do, it's better to do it a hundred percent wrong than 50% right. <laughs>